Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. In last lecture, a guest scientist Dr. Ratna Thangudu, he started providing you an overview for the large scale data sciences. Today he is going to continue his talk and mainly focus on the clinical proteomic tumor analysis consortium or CPTAC. I think it is really important to know that there are some resources publicly available which are sharing large amount of data set. I think TCGA the cancer genome atlas from National Cancer Institute was one such initiative which has really provided large data set to the broad community. Thousands of patients entire genome for various type of tumors were sequenced and then that data made publicly available. It was so interesting to note that many of those data set while the original data was published already in nature, but from the same data set many people started probing a specific questions that what could be the effect of let us say survival for based on different genes and then you know they did metadata analysis published papers based on that. So, not only the original papers which generated data those were published, but also many associated papers came out solely based on the data available in public repository. So, the cancer genome atlas really made a huge impact to the broad community for sharing the data and making them publicly available. So, in this light the CPTAC provides a very good uh, resource for the community to look at the proteomic data of different tumor types. So, Dr. Ratna will talk about the common data analysis pipeline of CPTAC and cancer imaging archive. Various omics data repository such as even imaging data for various cancers, genomic data from the NCI GDC portal as well as the DB GAP some of these are good resources repositories available for obtaining large data set which is already available from the you know very nicely done experiments using next generation sequencing as well as mass spectrometry. The huge amount of resources have been already put in to obtain these data and now the data is made available to public for doing further analysis. So, Dr. Ratna will actually illuminate you provide you more information about how these repositories these resources could be accessed and what kind of features are there and how you can make use of them for your own research in which way you can analyze the data or use the data for your various comparisons. So, let us welcome Dr. Ratna for his second lecture on the big data sciences. All right. So, the interesting thing with uh, CPTAC program is we do release all of the data even before the publications come out that is a pretty interesting way to look at the data right. So, if you are generating the data you are most of the times you are already worried if I put my data out there somebody else will publish, but that is actually hindering the uh, progress of the research in terms of how uh, the government sees. So, there is some uh, guidelines that come <coughs> put forth saying that we will give you the data, but there is an embargo date that I will show in the last clip. So, I mean I am just showing like we are pretty active like every other month we will release some one study, we harmonize all the studies and at least on the top these 1, 2, 3, 4 those studies they do not have any publications yet. The groups are working, Dr. Mani is working on one publication, Dr. Uh, David Fenyo is working on uh, another publication right now and Bing Zhang is working on another publication all right here. So, there is something called embargo date. So, the expectation is that all the data is free, but we expect use it, but you wait until that date before you publish because that means basically we are giving credit to the uh, gen data generators from the consortium to publish first. All right. So, this is the common data analysis pipeline that we run every every piece of data that comes into uh, CPTAC data portal we have all of the uh, uh, Amazon based galaxy based uh, infrastructure to run a pipeline on that 
This is basically, as you can see here, it's MSGF search, and then we have a custom built protein report summary generation. And at the end, uh, the files that I'm pointing out earlier is basically identified peptides, identified proteins, and the quantitation data, and also the study sample consistency report, which is basically QC metrics. So there's a lot of information out there. So without downloading any of these raw files, you can just use this information. But if you are not satisfied with the results, you can always get those uh, raw files and <coughs> generate them. And another thing uh, you would appreciate if you notice is basically all of the mass spectrometry files, they are proprietary, that, that they come from the instrument, right? So you need to have a Windows machine. There is a lot of complications how you convert them into open source. So most of the pipelines run very smoothly and seamlessly in Linux environment. So there is a bottleneck that we have to do the first steps in the, uh, <clears throat> the Windows environment. So what we do, we follow uh, open standards and we make all of the, we convert all of the raw data into MZML. MZML is the representation of the proprietary formats in the open data formats. So all of that information is available as MZML also. And all the other information that comes as so a pet spectral matches and other things, we convert them into the open source formats, MZML, MZIDentML, and so on, wherever it is possible. All right. So this is once you are on a particular study page, you see a lot of 43 studies uh, listed there. You can click on a study. Once you go there, so the first thing is because it's all cancer related, uh, patient derived. So we take utmost care to actually curate all of the data, uh, the clinical information, and also the experimental design. So we put all that information in these files. These are just simple Excel files you can just download, but it has a lot of information that connects you to the files in here. Uh, and then we have also a metadata packet. So that has all the protocol information, uh, fast protocol information. And also we have the protein reports that I mentioned earlier. So they're all packaged into one single uh, packet that you can just download those two, for example. You don't need anything else. The bottom ones are raw files. And uh, as you would might have noticed here, it's like R dot R1. So what that means is so we have, we version all of the protein result, report results. What happens? Sometimes we find something interesting that we need to update the pro, uh, pipeline itself. So then we will read on the pipeline and we re <coughs> report the results as a new version. So always you can trace back what that means. All right. So I talked a lot about all this mass spectrometry data I showed, but where is all this other omics data? Where is the genomics data? Where is the clinical data? Where is the imaging data? So that's all CPTAC is producing. Where is it sitting? Let's see. Okay. The imaging data sits in cancer imaging archive. The genomic data is sitting in GDC data portal. The other part of the genomic data that is a SNP array data, it's sitting in dbGaP. That's a database of genotypes and phenotypes. And the proteomic data is sitting here. Excellent. So we have data from one single patient sitting in four different areas. So how do you connect all of them? So we are generating data. It's extremely difficult even for me to connect all the dots. And it's not helping, right? So there's a lot of information being lost. Uh, so what to do? So Dr. Hen uh, uh, Henry actually mentioned about a precision medicine initiative that came to uh, light in the last four years say Joe Biden's uh, Cancer Moonshot Initiative. So as a part of that, the National Cancer Institute, it's developing a cancer research data commons. It's a big ecosystem, a theoretical ecosystem, where all the repositories here, these stacks are basically kind of repositories. So genomics, proteomics, imaging, so on, they all coexist together. So physically they are at different locations on different servers. But in the ecosystem, so they are together. And then we provide, the ecosystem provides analysis of all of the information. So now I talked only about earlier the common data analysis pipeline for proteomic data. But we will have tools, the expectation that we will have tools to analyze the proteogenomic component. And then we will have data models and dictionaries to represent the data. So that I, when I call a patient, I'm calling that patient from all different resources at one time. All right, so then 
we have visualization, we have QWERTY, basically if you go to any portal you have all these features. And the kind of users that we are expecting is you see there are wide variety of users we are looking at. The patients, clinicians, computer scientists and tool developers and, and biomedical researchers. So, everyone's expert is different, everyone's expectations are different. So, such an ecosystem trying to uh, support so many different kinds of users, it is a uh, it is magnanimous effort is needed all right. So, and then there are cloud resources. So, I have all this data sitting there, but I want to analyze that data myself. So, there are 100 data sets sitting, uh, I want I will pick and choose 3 or 4 different uh, data sets and I want to analyze by myself, how will I do it. So, that is that is where we have cloud resources. So, Dr. Mani has talked about the fire cloud the other day. So, fire cloud is one such resource. So, you just need to have a login, you do not have to take anything other than your credit card right. So, you go there and you log in and you have the tools existing there, this is pipeline and you have data sitting there, everything is there. You pick a pipeline, you attach your data and you run the pipeline that is it. You click a button, only thing is I mean uh, you have to understand what you are doing, but all the tools are available that is the that is the vision NCA has in terms of this <coughs> research data commons. So, Already there is one NCI genomic data commons which came to light uh, 3 years ago. So, uh, most of you might have heard about the TCGA the cancer genome atlas and all of the data used to be available in a TCGA data portal. That is very specific to TCGA. So, but now there are so many programs coming up and see I thought we have to bring all of this genomic data together at one resource, it is not just one program specific resource, but rather a common resource where all the genomic data will be there. So, that is what they did and right now there are about 40 plus programs, there are humongous programs that take so much data there out there and this is a, a free resource, there is no login required and you can see there are so many different cancer types available already. So, this is all about the genomic data. And then uh, I talked about the NCI cloud resources. Uh, so, Dr. Mani already talked about the Broad's fire cloud. So, cloud is, is, is a public cloud. So, somebody else is actually offering you services. Uh, so, you do not have to do anything, you do not need to have a cluster, right. So, cluster uh, yesterday, I mean, you are asking me, I have this much data. So, I do not have any disk space, what do I do? So, I buy a new disk, I will attach it, reconfigure it and then 10 days later more clients come and you generate more data. So, what do you do? And there is no solution for that. So, people are slowly moving towards public clouds, these are uh, Amazon web services and Google cloud, I can I mean anyone can actually have a free account, you can log in try to explore. The good thing with that is. Uh, you do not need to have a lot of informatics expertise to begin with, uh, do not be scared, just go out there, see what is there, lot of them are made as services. So, I want to do this, so you click a button and you pay a price for that minimum. So, so Broad Institute of System Biology, they have a cancer genomic cloud and then 7 bridges. Seven Bridges is a uh, private company, it is a commercial uh, a partner with NCI in developing, but they did it on AWS. Uh, the Fire Cloud and the Seven Bridges, I would recommend you to take a look at those two resources. Uh, Institute of System Biology is more of a program programmer centric uh, approach they took. So, they made all the data available in a certain way and you can access through APIs. Uh, uh, programmatically. Uh, so, you need to have a little expertise in understanding that, uh, but they do have uh, some kind of a uh, UI where you can actually look at the results. So, now the genomic data commons and the cloud resources are the only things from the ecosystem I they showed they are existing as of today. So, last year this proteomic, so NCA thought all the CP tech data is sitting just like the way TCGA used to sit, it is in its own specific resource. So, what do we do about that? That is why they came up with why do not we have a proteomic data commons because there are more programs that are coming out 
It's not just a CP tag, but there are Apollo and ICPC that I will talk a little bit later. And Dr. Henry talked about that. So, we need to have a similar resource, but we are tasked to actually have both, uh, both the GDC and the cloud resources combined. So, we have the data and also analysis tools at one place for the proteomic data. That is pretty ambitious. Yeah, that is what I mean. So, now that is the proteomic node, but it needs to do both the things that the GDC and the cloud resource are doing together. All right. So, the very high level goals of the PDC are the proteomic data commons, unsilo the mass spectrometry data, everybody is storing on their own local spaces, right. Do not do that, share it publicly. And the move from a situation where people move the data to the local tools. So, same thing I am telling you, do not do not download the data, you bring your tool to the data because data is so humongous. It is not just your local storage, it is about how you transfer the data. Does IIT's network allow you to transfer so much of data, right? I do not think so, it is not worth it. So, instead you bring your tool, go there to the cloud and analyze. And then this is an interesting thing, I always am, am shift from a data graveyard model to a data workspace model. What this means is graveyard the one I talked about earlier, you go you deposit your data after the life cycle of your research. That is like you are dumping it somewhere, I, I am done with this, I do not want this anymore, right. That is data graveyard. So, nobody looks at that kind of data. But the workspace model that we are proposing with the ProDMA data commons is you connect your instrument directly to the workspace on the PDC. So, the data directly moves from the instrument directly to the workspace. So, there you attach all your metadata. When you st when you are ready to analyze the data, at that point you actually attach all the metadata, all the samples and the study design and which tools you want to use and you click a button and run the pipeline. Yeah, so that is the cloud thing actually doing. So, you can whatever the tool that you develop, you can dockerize that. Okay, so, dockerization maybe you have to uh, learn a little bit about that, but basically it is not just the tool, but the environment, the computer system where it runs, you package the whole thing and put it on somewhere. Uh, it is like a uh, another database, it is called doc store. So, once you have the tool, you can take the to that particular tool to the cloud and run it, right. And like here I said, these are the high level goals, they are goals. So, we are not there yet, there are a lot of, uh, uh, there we have to uh, cross a lot of hurdles to reach to those goals. And uh, in, in PDC, we are starting small. So, we will make uh, a couple of pipelines available initially. And based on the user's interest, we will add more. Uh, so that way, we know what is interest in the community. Just, I mean, I cannot. We cannot have a resource that tries to do so much, and and then give it to you. And you see, uh, the users come and see like 90% of the stuff. Okay, we are not interested in this. So that's not the good use of money or time or therefore. Right? Did I answer your question? And then we have to improve the metadata annotations and ensure the data is annotated well, like the standards I was talking about. Well, I just to give you an idea of what kind of data you will see in future. Uh, so, CPTAC uh, data, that is I already talked about. Then we have Apollo and the International Cancer Proteogenomic Consortium, that is uh, Dr. Srivastava is part of. 
and then uh, human tumor atlas and lastly I said user generated data that is your data right. So, whenever you start generating the data you can upload all right. So, what we did uh, about 6 months ago uh, we started building a prototype that is what we call proteo proteomic data commerce pilot or in other words we call MVP or a minimally viable product. So, what we did is like I, I talked about a lot of things right now what we did is like build a minimal product and put it out there so, it has some basic features that I am talking about it does it does it will not do everything, but bits and pieces of everything I talked about and then see it take the feedback from the community and develop on those right. So, rather than I develop the whole product and I put it there like I said and nobody is interested in that it is waste of our uh, effort. So, uh, we will the portal like the, the commons will have a data submission system a portal where you will see all the information and a workspace that I talked about where you can actually upload your data and run pipelines and then uh, uh, programmatically or the computationally access that information um, uh, uh, through the problems. All right. Yeah, data processing and harmonization is the common data analysis pipeline that we run on all of the data. So, what happens like within CPTAC, so uh, each of the cancer types is being uh, the data is being generated by different groups and it is analyzed by different softwares and different protocols. So, when we start putting out the data the, through the portal, so it is we are one single consortium, but we are actually providing results from so many different kinds of pipelines. So, uh, what the, the even when you go to the G genomic data commons, so we have both these portals what we try to do is this is called data harmonization process. Any data that comes to uh, these resources we will use a one single common pipeline on all of them. So, it is not an ideal way, but it is one way to look at all the information on one single way. So, that is something what the pride is doing. What uh, uh, peptide atlas are doing right. So, you are depositing all the data in one resource of your publication is done and they are running through their own one common pipeline because when you have so much data if it is not harmonized as per one single pipeline it is very difficult to make sense out of it. And then that is that is what I call processing and harmonization and the processing workspace is basically you would be able to run the pipeline by yourself right. We run the pipeline as a starting step, but you want to change something some parameters ok I am not very happy with this you want to change, change some parameters you should be able to do that. So, uh, as an example we will have uh, encyclopedia as one DIA pipeline and also the uh, pipe uh, the DDA pipeline that I described earlier. So, it is just uh, showing the uh, uh, software architecture of our system um, and you do not have to actually uh, spend a lot of time here, but just to give you an idea of this this is called S 3 this is a hard drive you can say the cloud hard drive where you put all your data. So, it is scalable. So, as your data is increasing they will just make available how much ever you want. So, there is no limitation here the same thing like you want more compute power with a click of a button you can add as many processors as you want. And this thing uh, it is called authorization. Uh, the idea of this is basically because there are so many portals I talked about genomic data commons, proteomic data commons, imaging and the cloud pilots there are so many things are there, but uh, the user has to remember all his user IDs and passwords and, and how do these commons actually talk to each other if it is not a single sign on. So, the purpose of this box is basically telling that we will have a single sign on once you sign into any of these, these resource. So, you will be able to access the data from the other resources. Uh, seamlessly. So, in conclusion today you have learnt about one of the large initiative from NCI about the CPTAC which has contributed the scientific knowledge 
for the cancer research immensely. You also learnt that to obtain omics data for a single patient you need to search four different repositories hence the NCI has taken initiative to make a common data portal so that you do not have to look for variety of you know different places to search for data and all data could be commonly accessed from the cancer research data commons or CRDC. You also got a glimpse of how CRDC has different features such as visualization, analysis, query and many more features. We also learnt that how cloud platform which is being freely available to everyone can be very useful in handling and analyzing big data or even metadata analysis. In the next lecture Dr. Ratna will continue his talk about large scale data sciences and inform us more about different publicly available portals. Thank you.